What's up though everybody, it's Hollywood Street Savage, aka Mr. Tote the Plastic, and I'm back with episode number two of my Hollywood Street Stories, where I share homegrown stories from my neighborhood in my city, Pontiac, Michigan, with you guys, the viewers. For this video, I'm going to be speaking on the Pontiac School Bus Bombings of 1971, where an alleged group of Ku Klux Klan activists blew up 10 school buses in an effort to keep racial segregation in Pontiac schools. On the night of August 30th, 1971, Ku Klux Klan related activists broke into the school district maintenance garage on the intersection of North Saginaw Street and Montcalm in Pontiac, Michigan. They firebombed 10 school buses making national headlines. The whole summer of 1971 and even earlier, people protested in the field directly in front of the building as well as the side of the building that Saginaw sits on. The federal court had issued a citywide desegregation plan busing students back and forth across town from one part of the city to another to integrate the schools and a lot of people in Pontiac didn't like it. Freedom of our country has been destroyed. We don't even have freedom of choice anymore. I don't feel like my kid should have to be forced to go to school that he's not interested in. He's leaving a school within three blocks of the home. We just don't believe in it. I think the uh, white community is showing more of a strong reaction against busing right now than the black community. Uh, I don't think the blacks want busing uh, as per se, but I don't think they would show uh, this type of reaction in the white community. Well, I've been very much against busing ever since they first mentioned it, and uh, well, I'm just kind of proud of whoever done this. I hope they don't catch them. <laughs> Well, I don't believe in violence. Uh, I don't think this is the answer. We, uh, through the uh, Northside Action Group, are trying every legal means to keep our children from being bused. But this is not what you call legal. So the night before this plan was scheduled to take effect, these KKK activists acted. Anti-busing forces promised to resist, and resist they did. The first gesture, a symbolic one. As Pontiac embarked on his first day of court order school desegregation, a handful of women chained themselves to a fence surrounding the building where 10 buses were firebombed. Police arrested nine women and charged them with disorderly conduct. Buses then rolled out on their assigned mission to transport 9,000 of the city's kids in an effort to achieve racial balance in Pontiac schools. At one stop, previously all-white LeBaron School, bus drivers were met by pickets at LeBaron. Large numbers of white parents supported the boycott. At LeBaron, attendance was off nearly 50%. Black parents were equally reluctant to send their children to school, and attendance at Wilson School was less than half the expected 450 students. Under court order, all white LeBaron had to send its 5th and 6th graders to all black Wilson School. Wilson School, in turn, had to send its 1st to 4th grade students to LeBaron. In all, 300 kids were involved. He's going to school, and he's going to behave, and he's going to get along with everybody. He's got, you've got to learn to get along with everybody. You can't just... You've got to work with all kinds of people. You might as well start right now going to school with all kinds of people. I don't like him having to take a bus. We live right across the street. But he's going to take a bus if that's where he has to go to school. At offices of Board of Education in downtown Pontiac, anti-busing parents sang songs and marched. Leader Irene McCabe delivered a makeshift school bus to Pontiac School Superintendent Dana Whitmer. Later, there were reports of violence at a Pontiac school and a bomb threat forced the evacuation of another. Then, fast forward to 1974, a man by the name of Elmer Tackett, hospitalized with terminal leukemia, confessed on his deathbed to the school bus bombings. Tackett spoke before his attorney and a handful of Detroit area news media reps and said that he alone carried out the bombings on the instructions of an anonymous caller and said that a masked accomplice aided him but could not identify the accomplice. Tackett, who was a security official for the Michigan Ku Klux Klan at the time of the incident, bundled dynamite and lit fuses. Five KKK members were convicted in the Detroit Federal Court for the bombings, Tackett said it wasn't them. They had nothing to do with that night, said Mr. Tackett. There was only one man who had anything to do with the bombing. That was me. He made the confession to clear his conscience after his doctor told him he only had two weeks to live. He was 54 years old at the time of his death. This story was crazy, man. Like, this dude was tripping. Like, he really ain't want black kids and white kids mixed in at school. 
he believed so much in racial segregation in the schools that he blew up 10 school buses. This dude was tripping. He said he acted alone with a masked accomplice, but he wouldn't give up his masked accomplice. According to the article that I read, he acted like he didn't know who the person was. Like, he couldn't identify the person because he didn't know who the person was under the mask type stuff. Like, somebody sent them from, you feel me? And they just helped him put the plate on so then, boom, he confesses on his deathbed to the crimes and said that he alone carried out the bombings with that master accomplice and that the people that they had in federal custody wasn't the ones that did it. But I don't know, you know what I'm saying? Maybe maybe they did do it because he was about to die in two weeks, so maybe he was just trying to take the rap for it and try to free them real quick. I don't know. I just I just found this story real interesting, though. It was a little piece of pioneer history. I thought it might be interesting to y'all. So do you think he really acted alone, or do you think that the five people that they got in federal custody really did it, and he was just trying to take take the blame for them, you know what I'm saying? Let me know what y'all think in the comment section below. Like the video if y'all was feeling it. Make sure y'all hit that subscription button. Till next time, I'm out. Hollywood Street. Free at last, free at last. Hit the ground running not to hurt.